Hey crafters, it's me, Jen Evers, with Quality Crafts, and things are bumping around. <laughs> Welcome to Friday! We are going to actually be doing three different techniques, kind of all mixed together. The first one is going to be um, ex the uh, <laughs> Distress Oxide Sprays. Then we're going to mix them with Dilutions Shimmer Sprays, and we're also going to be using the Sizzix 3D Textured Impressions. Is anybody else spinning because my side is spinning? I don't know if I need buffer time or... I'm just going to swing that around, make sure that everyone else can get in here. <clears throat> so I'm going to show you right away kind of what we're, what we're going for, what we're looking at, and then we'll do a whole bunch of these things together. All right. So the first thing I was doing was taking half sheets of eight and a half by 11 paper and just playing around with the sprays. Now, some of these I labeled and some of them I forgot to, but I believe this was, um, something like mermaid lagoon or something like that. And then with the chocolate. Or it might have been a rust color. I can't remember. I think it was, I think most of my did were chocolate. Hey, Kathy. So this one turned out really stunning. I love this. I didn't add any water to mine, but we can do that. Here's another one I did with uh, chocolate and white. That one was really pretty. Same with this one. Some blue and the chocolate brown. Gorgeous. This one was three different ones. I think this was, um... I started writing them on afterwards and I was like, oh dang, I should have wrote that down. But I think this is citrus and like ocean and chocolate all mixed together. So you'll see a little bit more of that green up there and then the uh, blues and then the browns. The chocolate, it almost looks like a, a bronze or a copper kind of thing. Really pretty. Hi, Charlotte. Hi, Kathy Webb. We're just going through some of the ones that I've come up with. Um, I could not remember for the life of me how I got this fun green in here. And then I realized, and I wrote it down, uh, chocolate shimmer and citrus. Let me see what that name specifically is. Twisted Citron. That's what I'm trying to think of. So the difference between this one having that kind of a green patina hue and like something like this with the silver and the blue is that green, that, that limey green turns more of a patina where the blues really stay more of a blue. But we'll do a little bit of experimenting with that, which reminds me I didn't pull out a lot. I didn't pull out a lot more paper, so I might have to do a paper run. <clears throat> Same with this one. That green pat patina looks really pretty. This one is also the same colors, the patina and the chocolate. So basically what I did, this one is chocolate shimmer. Yeah, the brown, the chocolate shimmer paint and uh, peeled paint and mermaid lagoon. So peeled paint and mermaid lagoon will give, also give you some green. These are a couple that I tried um, a technique of getting two prints at once if you want them both to have that really cool um, embossing. So that's where the embossers come in. So I'm gonna show you two right now, but we can experiment with all the other ones I have off to the side. If you've not gotten these Sizzix 3D embossing folders, they're called texture fades. <sighs> you gotta come out and party with the, with the texture fades because check this out. Look at that. Here's one that I did. <clears throat> I did a purple and a silver, and look how pretty that is. It's stunning. And then this, and so that one, let's see. This one's called Elegant, and this one is called Mosaic Gems. And look at that. That's how pretty that is, and it's like all different levels. And here's one that I did in just the white. It's even pretty in just the white. And then I did also one with oh, a whole bunch of sprays. I don't even know what I put on this one. I think this one was the chocolate and then a little bit of um, that mermaid and then a little bit of the twisted citron possibly, but that one turned out really pretty. Hi, Pat, Linda Ross, hello. Thank you guys for joining me. Let me just show you a couple more of the ones that I have so you can see what more of them look like. So you get that, that gorgeous texture. That one is called woven in case you're looking for that one. We will be having these in the store as well. 
We've got the one called Bohemian Botanicals. I mean, I can't just say that one or this one or that one are, are the coolest or the best. They're just, they're just crazy, crazy fantastic. This one is botanical. So you get all those little leafy like patterns. And like if you use the actual like foiled papers and stuff, you're going to get that stunning result of that foil look. Here's one for winter, winter snowflakes. Oh, hello, Jamie. Yeah, pizza night here too. We have Papa Murphy's, what is it called? Mediterranean chicken or something. This one is flower and heart doodle. But look how pretty. Kind of a whimsical little name for such a beautiful one. And then this one has all the different layers of hearts and they call this one hearts. So there we go. Move those out of the way. We might do some leaves today. I'm just not sure. We'll see where it takes us. And if we're having a ball and we want to go a little past an hour today, we might just go ahead and do that. Because I might want to make some of these into cards. I think that would be really fun. But let's get into the spraying because that's the best stuff. So first I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab some of the colors and show you how they go together in a spray. And <clears throat> you can mix however many colors together you want. But I usually stick to one color or two colors and then one shimmer. So one or two oxide sprays and one shimmer to make that all that shimmery goodness come out. We will go ahead and do some larger pages. And if you guys want to just shout out some of your votes on what colors you want to see put together, let me know. I'm going to start out with those two that I really liked, which is the chocolate one. There's a wrinkle in it right there. Melted chocolate, it's called. That's the Dilution Shimmer Spray. And then the other one we're going to use right now is the Twisted Citron Distress Oxide Spray. A couple things to know about these. So you take the covers off. You can go ahead and take the covers off right away. Have a paper towel or a white, wet wipe or something. And the, the oxide sprays, you can put that over the top and just really give them a shake. And when you're completely done, you wipe off the nozzle before you put it away. For these, you can cover the top if you want, but you shake them back and forth. You hear it? It's kind of like, you're not going up and down. You're just shaking them back and forth. Another thing that works really well for me is just to roll it back and forth like this. And you can see the stuff mix up. So if you think that it's not mixed up enough, swirl it a little bit more. I, I see a lot in there. So I'm going to go ahead and lay down... Um, some Distress Oxide Spray in Twisted Citron first. And then I'm going to try to shoot for those empty spaces with the chocolate. Now you can spray on a ton and let it run. You can let it run from one side to the other, whatever you want to do. You can add as much or as little as you want. And I really like the way they look when I just kind of let them dry on their own. Sandy Marino, hello! Kathy, how's it going? But I'm going to try to speed this one up and I'm going to use the Sizzix. This is a brand new tool from Sizzix. It's double speed. So you have the slow, the one that goes like back to slow down, kind of like, and then forward to go fast. Um, just just to dry these a little bit quicker and just know that we've got um, a challenge on these that if we sell uh, 30 of these one of you will be a lucky winner to get yours completely free and then we're gonna run another contest um, probably sometime this weekend where if you find um, the little thing we're gonna hide the first person to find it is gonna get 25% off of theirs and they're $26.99 a piece so I'm going to go ahead and just blast this on the highest level first. Yeah, 
I didn't have to use my thumb today. And if you click on the back, of course, it's going to be a lighter blow. So I'm not going to tell you that you should or shouldn't buy the Ranger gun or the regular guns or this one. But if you're starting out and you want one that's got both speeds, I would highly recommend that you get this one. It is awesome. Um, I also do have both of the others. I love those two for different reasons. But if you can get two in one and you're already looking for one, I highly recommend this one. Okay, and you can see when it mixes, it also stands up well when I'm not messing around. Um, so if I put it down with a stand, it's going to sit down. It's going to stay. It's not going to roll around, which is really nice. If you see where the citrus, the twisted citrus touched the gold shimmer, it patinaed. But you can also see in the middle here in these spots that that citrus, that bright citrus green stayed as well. So you get a little bit bit of both worlds in there. Isn't that pretty? We do. We sell them and we also sell the Tim Holtz ones. So I love them all. It just depends on what works in your area. So if your area is kind of tight, you might want the one that does both speeds. That is so pretty. I love the way that went. I love this little veiny part that creates. So if there's some... Why am I getting error notices here okay you guys let me know if there's a problem on your end now if there's combinations that you guys want to see you let me know this time I'm gonna go for a little bit darker green this is evergreen bow and as we're going on I'm gonna just go ahead and rub the front of that sprayer and I'm going to put that cover back on so it doesn't get clogged. And then the chocolate one, I'm going to wipe that one down and just put that cover on. So we're going to use Evergreen Bow, which is a little bit darker of a Distress Oxide. Spray this one. And I'm going to mix that with a shimmer spray that is... It's called Slate Gray. It's really kind of a silver. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. And I'm just going to cover that one and give it a shake. Normally nothing comes out the end, but just in case, Tim Holtz um, suggested that we do this. And so far it's worked out grand for me. Like, look, there's nothing that came out, but you never know. Until I saw him say that, I was having major issues. So here's another really cool thing. Now these are all spraying really nice today. But if you can't get it to spray, I watched a lady in a video and I couldn't figure out why she kept turning it and putting her thumb down. The thumb um, action actually really gets things going. So if you're having a tough time with one, try that out. Look at that slate gray. Isn't that pretty? I'm pretty sure that the way we have this camera set up today that you're going to be able to see a lot of what's going on. I was messing around with that today. And then let's give a little burst from our new Sizzix product. don't like when it all gets matted off like one side so I'm just gonna soak some of that up in there and somebody asked Ma Bean says got here late what kind of paper are you using I'm just literally using um, 110 pound cardstock Nina cardstock index the index kind it's super um it's super sturdy not enough to do a lot of like water coloring but as long as you do you know a couple sprays of each one it turns out really pretty on here Yep, Hulk is in the house. Hi, Brenda Weidman. I'm going to add 
just a little bit more of that green. shiny part look at that so pretty just wait till you see what we do with them too when we add them to cards and cut out cut them with die cuts and um, punches and things so here's the first two very different but just gorgeous fantastic hi Wanda so let's get into um, I'm gonna do two this time so I'm going to go ahead and wipe these guys off. And this one, I'm going to do like a yellow, a yellow and, let's see, a yellow and a pink. Let's try these two together. So we've got picked raspberry distress oxide and mustard seed distress oxide. Give these guys a little shake. That one leaked a lot. But at least it's not leaking out into the cover, which is hard to clean. So that's a major help. That one didn't leak much at all. And then we're going to mix in with that a different shimmer. Let's do, how about if we do like a purple? We do a purple shimmer straight. This one's called laid back lilac. So let's go ahead and get this one shaken up. Hey Rosie. All right, we're gonna start with the yellow. I'm gonna just do a coating of that. And then do a couple sprays of pink. See where that one's not spraying now? Look at that. I moved to the to the thumb and that worked. And then here comes, comes the shimmer. We'll see, hopefully we won't get a lot of brown. It might turn brown. But you don't know until you try it out. So give some different colors a chance and see what happens. Jeannie Ellis, how is your week, everybody? This looks really cool. This looks like really splattery. Ooh, look at that purple on the bottom. Wait till I show you. Lift it up. It's shining right through it all. so different when it's dry compared to when it's wet like look at that it looked like the purple was disappearing completely but check out that shine check that out Ooh, this one's really speckled I like that one that's gonna look really cool when we cut a dye on that one I hope this one dries a little bit quicker that's so pretty it's kind of like using alcohol inks where every single one you get is different but they're all so fun We'll do one more spray and then I'm going to start making and creating some things with these. 
I want to show you that other. Actually, let's do that next. We got three really good, really good papers here. I'm going to move them out of the way. You know what? If you do, did this with um, orange and um, like maybe a red shimmer and an orange paint, you might be able to get that kind of looks like fire to me. You could maybe get a fire background. Okay, here's how I got, and I got to set it all up. So let me wipe off my sprays here. I'm going to show you how I got these two right here. Notice that they're not the same. They're not the same way. Like this is an indent and this is the actual embossed side. They're two both different because we're going to squeeze these through an embossing folder after we spray it. And that way we're going to get two different looks and two different prints, if you will. So let's do, I did the yellow, the pink, and the blue. I don't think it matters which blue, so I'm going to just use salty ocean. Oh, and I can take these back off because I'm going to use them again. All right, let's shake up the blue because we haven't done that. And instead of doing that same, um, this same pattern, which I can't remember what that one's called. Yeah, I can't even find that one. I don't know what I did with it. Anyway, we're not going to do this pattern. We're going to do a different one. So let me show you that first off the bat because you won't be able to see me running it through. It's this one. And are they on there? No, I'm going to have to name them all. I'm going to have to write on the name of them all. So let me tell you which one it is. It's this one. It looks a lot different in the print on there, I think, than it does on here. And this one is called Elegant. So this is the one we're going to use. You want quite a bit of ink on this time, so I'm going to try to be kind of quick, and then I'm going to stick it in that embossing folder and emboss it. And there, look at the colors that are already happening there. Smoosh it down and run it through. Now, if you do it juicy enough, you're going to have this stuff all over. Don't worry about that. We can wipe it right off. Oops, I forgot to add the other one. My bad. We'll have to do it again. Oh my gosh, look at how cool that turned out. We're going to do this one again. I forgot to add the second layer. You had both pieces of paper when you put it through. My bad. I got another one right here. Because that way it won't come out quite so soaked. Because you'll be sharing it with the other half. So let's go ahead and do that one one more time. And the first thing I'm going to do is, do you see where all the ink is? Just go ahead and wipe it off. You can use a baby wipe if it's not already, if it's kind of already drying, you can go ahead and use a baby wipe. Because I also got it on my board for my cuddle bug, but I'm just going to wipe that right off. Grab a baby wipe and we're good to go. Alrighty. Let's do this one more time. I gotta remember to put the paper over the tops. Here we go. And the blue. There goes the th there goes the thumb. Okay. Now this piece is going over the top. And then they're going into the sandwich. Okay. Where did I put that big plate? Oh, it's still on there, right in front of my face. All right, we're rolling it through the cuddle bug. And now keep in mind, if you have uh, a Big Shot or a Cuddle Bug where you use the big plates and the skinnier plates, 
Normally you would use two of these clear plates with one of these and you put your embossing folder through, but because these embossing, embossing folders are like double the width, what you're going to want to do is just get rid of one of these plastic ones and put your sandwich in the middle of that instead of having two of them. All right, now when we pull these apart, we should have two. There we go. And they're not as, I'll show you what I mean. Aren't they pretty? Oh, that's one of my favorites. This one that I didn't do got really, really waterlogged. Maybe you like that way. Maybe you like that. Maybe you don't. But if you have the ones that are up, that are raised, that came through a really good embossing, you can rub black ink on the top too, and I think that would be really pretty. Um, since this one's indented, I can't do it on there, but let's go ahead and try it on this one that worked out really well. We'll do, we'll heat it a little bit first. And then I think we'll make some things with this one because we go on and on and do, we could just do techniques for days with these. They're so cool. Give me a chance to sit down and look at you. I'm looking at you. Yeah, so let us know which one of these Sizzix 3Ds that you really love. And we all we have been selling the oxide sprays. I think we have one set left of the ones that just last came out. Um, and then the shimmer sprays were behind a little bit. So we are going to do, I think we're doing it right now. We're doing um, a pre-sale if anybody wants to catch up on the shimmer spray colors. Because Penny and I definitely want to catch up on those. They're so much fun. I've never done all shimmers together, but wouldn't that be beautiful? The other thing you could do is um, you can do the, um, what, am I, what am I trying to say here? You can do it just matte like this, and then you could add your own shimmer spray, like on top of it if you want. So if you don't have all the shimmer sprays, um, you can pick one clear shimmer spray or shimmer tool that you like and then shimmer the whole darn thing if you want. Okay, so I'm going to take my black ink, which is my VersaFine Onyx Black ink. It looks like this. Don't get that confused between um, VersaFine and VersaMark. I'm just going to get rid of a little bit of this ink that came through. Because VersaFine is black. And VersaMark is clear. VersaMark is for um, embossing. And even though it looks filthy, look how dirty that is. Even though it looks nasty, it still works like a charm. So they're, they're tools, not jewels, I was always told. Let's go ahead and just heat this a little bit more. And then we're going to put some ink on the top. I missed Elise. I gave Jamie the stink eye. I'm giving you the stink eye. <laughs> I missed Jeannie came in. Did I? And I think I missed her. And Beth Hansen, hello. on their um, artistic journey but if you're wondering why I'm heating the paper is because if I go at it and try to rub on ink on the top um, while it's still really wet it's really squishy and it's gonna mat it down you're gonna get black everywhere once you dry a piece of paper that's been manipulated it's almost like it dries stiffer like harder stronger almost if you if you ever have felt that, you'll notice it. So if you have never felt that before, wet a piece of paper and then dry it and see how the texture changes. And I really don't want to use something that's small because the smaller it is, the further into the, the holes I'm going to be able to go. So I'm going to try direct to paper. Sometimes this works really well and sometimes you really get messy. So I'm just going to try this out. I'm going to put down one layer of printer paper first. So 
So that way if I miss it, it'll go onto the paper. So here's what I'm gonna try to do is rub over the top and pull out a lot of what's, you know, what's been raised, what's been embossed. Because one side is embossed and one side is debossed. We're trying to pull out the embossed stuff. And it's messy, it's messy when you do it this way. Um, you can also try a brayer. A brayer would be a lot cleaner way. That's pretty. So let's grab that other one that we have that was embossed. Ooh, this one's really wet. <laughs> this one's super wet. Let's give this a good shot here. video to be you watching me watch paper dry so I'm just gonna find my nearest um, brayer we're just gonna try to brayer over this it's not it might look a mess but we'll, we'll give it a shot we lost the box this is okay we'll clean it up later All right, and then to clean off, I'm just gonna lay out this baby wipe here. So we're just gonna ink up our brayer, which is roll and lift up, roll and lift up. And the reason why you wanna do that is so you get ink on the whole entire brayer. If you just go back and forth, you're only gonna get ink on one little part. And then when you roll it across, you're only gonna ink, get ink on one part and it's not gonna be even. So you wanna roll and pick up, roll and pick up in little short spurts. So you get ink over the whole darn thing. That'll get you the best ones. And best says, I found that doing circular motions very gently over the raised areas produces better results than streaking it. Thanks, Beth. All right, there we go. Let's try this. It's not quite as far across wide as the paper, but. You have to have a light touch to that too, so you have a little heavy handed on that side. Whoopsies. That turns out really pretty cool. I wasn't really planning on doing that one, but I thought, you know, that would look really cool. And then you can use your rub and buff too, which we just did a sale on not too long ago. So if you don't like the black and you want something a little more subtle, like a gold, you can use these. I'll show you one of those too. Because we got the time. Happy Friday. Anytime you can get a brayer that, oh my gosh, you know what's coming up too? We're getting in the store. Oh, we're getting some really cool um, jelly plates. So there's going to be some jelly printing up, up here in the house pretty soon. All right, so these actually will pop right off of here. You won't have to do all this when I'm messing around what I'm doing. You can pop this right off of here and go and run it right under the sink. But for purposes of the video I'm just going to go ahead and do that real quick and then I'm going to pull out some gold I'm going to put that right on my finger and then I'm going to go over some of the spots now because we got black on there it's not going to be the best example but we'll do some anyways like I know that certain things are going to work or not work because I've used them before and I played around with it so if there's something that you're like, well, I don't really know, well, just give it a try. See what happens. Because you won't know unless you try it. And the more you try it and play with it, the more you have your own tips and tricks. So there we've got some, if I go sideways like that, do you see the gold tinge on there? If I didn't have the black, the gold would probably stand out a little bit more. But in person, it's really pretty. Let's add a little bit of silver. I feel like the silver is kind of dry and oh no there's a lot on there <laughs> there's a lot there oh that's pretty I'm not really worrying about staying on the top here I'm just trying not to go over the gold oh 
man. I really like the silver on here. Holy cow. Okay, let's do this one too. So pretty. I'm just using up the rest that's on my finger. Look at that. Ooh, you can see the gold and the silver. That's really pretty. Oh my goodness. I like that a lot. Super cool. Nope. Oh, oh, I need a wet wipe for my finger. You don't have to use those with your fingers. I just really like to use my fingers. You can use little daubers. That would be perfect for those. Oh, that's so pretty. We'll have to make a card with that. Yes, totally. I didn't plan out the cards. I thought we would just go with the flow. Um, because I figured this would probably take us most of the time to get through all these fun things. Alrighty. Oh, that is so pretty with that purple. I thought we were going to get brown, and we almost did. But because I think I didn't fleck on as much, we got a nice, like, coral orange. We got a little yellow. We got purple. A little bit of orange up there. Some yellow. So pretty. Oh, tons of stuff. Yeah, they're talking in the um, chat in case you can't see it. Talking a lot about um, what's going into the store because we're adding stuff daily, weekly. Penny is just, she's go, go, go. All right. I think we should make one with this because this is a fantastic. And I want to use this punch that I have. And I'm hoping this is dry enough that it'll punch straight through. It should. Ooh. And you can decide what colors you want. Like this one came out all silver. Maybe you don't want all silver. Maybe you want to make sure you get it in there so you have half and half. You get to decide how you want that to look. I want one that's got, um, these always get caught because of their skinny little design, but you can just pull them out. Punch them a couple of times so that paper comes through. There's nothing wrong with the punch. It's just the paper that I chose, the half wet paper and stuff. So I'm gonna go shoot for another one with that green, greenish blue, because I wanna stack these too. Jamie, you can't see the chat? So then we can stack these any way we want to show whatever color we want. Like that one. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This one. Oh my gosh, that's pretty. I'm going to um, put a hole in there with my crocodile. And then I should probably grab a... Um, Should probably grab a brad because I think that would look the prettiest. Okay, so I'm gonna set those down quick, grab a brad from my brad drawer. So I have a lot of brads too. This is my brad drawer. I want silver in that one, or ooh, we could do, this one kind of looks like that, that greenish, let's try that one. Oh, that looks really pretty. Let's go ahead and do that one. Oh, GD, I'm so sorry. And then I'm just going to use my finger to like roll back these leaves a little bit. So they kind of stick up some. I thought I pushed that pretty hard, but it's, they're still spinning a little bit. There we go. 
pretty and you don't have to do flowers that are this big either you can do smaller flowers but we're going to use that to go with um, a little bit of this and then hopefully we'll get on a little sentiment for that So I've got this, and then let me make a card base. I'm going to put this back in here before I drop it on the floor. Okay. This was an awesome week for me. I don't know. Everything just went so well. Oh, my blood work came back fantastic. So I couldn't really ask for much more than that. For those of you guys who don't know me very well, I just watch my blood work because I, I have a, I'm a transplant kidney. And they make me go in and get my blood drawn all the time. <laughs> Actually, they used to be every week and then every month. And I'm finally down to every two months. Oh, you see it now. Super. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Ooh, look at that. So this flower is going to totally match. Check that out. Because we made our own paper and our own flower. Fantastic. I'm going to do a little black thing in here. A little black a border, if you will. I think it's a border. I know I have some black paper in here. Oh, I have this one. Let's just use the back of that. Then I'd have to go searching for a... Uh, I have to go searching for a sentiment, so I probably won't put a sentiment on today. But that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and commit to this and put it down. So who wants to jump in on that buy challenge for the Sizzix tool? Because 30 for 30 out of a drawing, that's a pretty high chance you're going to get yours for free. Plus, we're going to do a fun little game that Penny's going to set up this weekend, where if you're the finder of the thing, more information to be to be continued. Dun, dun, dun. Um, <laughs> you'll get 25% off of yours if you find that. I'm going to do this because there's a little bit rubbing off on my hand and I don't want to transfer it to something else because I want this part to really be white. You can join that challenge on the resale group on Facebook. Or you can let us know here and we'll sign you right up. Penny can put you right in the dock. Yeah, let's see how I, I think I'm gonna do some glue dots for this. I always do a bunch because you never know which ones are gonna hit directly. Oh, see, now I got some on there, too. Oh, so cute. I'll push some of these up. You can flatten them out when you send them. That's not a big deal. But when I take pictures of them and stuff, I like to show the dimension. I love dimensional cards. Look at that. People will be like, oh, how'd you do that? Then you'd be like, oh, it's so hard. Let's sweating it was so difficult <laughs> and they'll be so impressed they'll be like oh my gosh did you see the stuff that so-and-so made yeah she's a genius that means you you're the genius thanks sherry who is that that signed up sherry larson thank you hon oh i got ink all over my sizzix blower oh man my heat tools my heat tools been diverginized with black ink. 
eventually it's going to look cool. You know what? You could probably alcohol ink the outside of it to make it look really pretty too. <laughs> I want to do a sentiment, but I also want to do some more cards with you. So can we just agree to not do a sentiment on here right now? Okay, cool. Because I, I do want to do one with this. This is so pretty. I want to do some kind of a dye. I feel like I've done this one dye before. I have them in, I have them my dies in a book now. I recently transferred. Let me show you. I recently transferred a whole bunch of my dies into this Creative Memories book. I'll try to show it under here, but it's really big. And let me move this out of the way. So in each pocket, there's um, dies, and then there's pages with like four pockets. <gasps> this would look really cool on there. Ever since I had to put Liney down, I feel like I see cats walking everywhere. Must be like a part of grieving, who knows? Sad. Very sad. I'm going to put this on here. Ooh, I hate to cover up the, the purple, but maybe we'll just do spot. We'll just do a spotty one. Oh, I got to put my flower right away. I'm going to use um, a little dauber for this one. See, I have some little different colored daubers on this one. I can't remember how this one works. I thought it was a scooter. Nope, it just comes up. I haven't used this one in a while. So we can do whatever we want here. I'm thinking, how about if we do some black and some silver? So if I'm going to do silver, I'm going to pull this out, and I'm going to try to use some of this. And the black, I'm going to go back to the VersaFine Onyx Black ink, and we'll see how these work together. So let's go ahead and put down some black. I'm going to leave the highlights of the purple there, because I just think it's so cool. I just don't want to ruin that. And then I'm going to go around with the black. I'm not going to make sure that, I'm not going to do it so that it's like jet black. You know, it's going to be kind of gray. I could go over it and over it until it's jet black, but I don't want to do that. We've got some, you know, we've got a lot of room over here. And then I'm just going to wipe this off with a baby wipe. So let's go ahead and do our first reveal. Isn't that pretty? And then let's go ahead and do, now some of that black's going to come off if we don't wipe that off. I'm going to go ahead and just use this one. Okay, we'll line this up again. Did I do it on the wrong side? I might have. Oh, there it is. Got to just look for a pattern. That looks pretty good. Okay. I'm going to put that one back. And I'm going to use this one that I've inked up in silver already. <laughs> sentiments and Jen. A match made in heaven. Don't get me wrong. I love doing the sentiments. Just that I never... That's not my the first thing I think of. I'm going to do um, the edge of the black. Like it went black into silver while still trying to maintain um, being able to see the purple. I don't know how this is going to work. Maybe when we're done, you can just say, you know what, that didn't really work for me. That doesn't look right. I don't know. I like to experiment with stuff, and it's really fun to do it with you guys because you guys got good ideas. You guys! Ooh, so if you, like, put, like, a little... um a fairy or a little like creature standing in there made it look like woods that's super cool so now we've got a little bit of that on there it's like it's very it's very magical so these are the rub-on metallic rub-ons this is color kit number one that i'm using right now there's four of them um, we have some of them in the store now we'll be getting all of them eventually those are relatively cheap. I think they're, what, $6, $6 a piece, maybe? 
Um, yeah, super cool. What do you guys think of that? So this side even looks really pretty too. So you can maybe use um, like one for the inside and one for the outside. That would be pretty. Or if you really like this sparkled look, you could punch some stuff out that incorporates that as well. Let me go ahead and rub some of it off. Oh, see, I rubbed it off over here and you can see the trees. Silly me. Beth Hansen. I would have liked to see it as a die cut in a dark color on top of that background. Ooh, we could do that, but I can't die cut the trees because that's not a die. But I can do a different one. If that's something that you want to see, absolutely. I'm going to go ahead and wipe this off quick. Oh, some of that just doesn't want to come off. That's okay. I'm decorating my mat. Look at that. I might have to use a little alcohol on that one. Let's try it out. Oh, a vignette look. What a fantastic idea. Who said that? Ah, oh, Pat O'Connor. Awesome idea. I had some I had some spray that kind of flew out there too. Okay, let's go ahead and cut this and do that other idea. I have another one, um, another die here. So this one, it, this one actually did come from my die bin, but or my die book, but it's actually not a die. It's just a metal stencil. Let's try this one, because this is my favorite die ever. One of them. It's this fancy floral one. So if we cut that one, we could put it over that other one. All right. Now we want to put this face down on our die, because we're going to cut face up. And so I think we got a little bit of every color in there if we look at it. Hard to see from your end. Yeah, the trees are just a stencil. I'm sorry, they came out of my die. They came out of my die, whatever you want to call that thing. So that was a little misleading. I apologize. Well, let's go ahead and do this one because this one's really pretty. So die side up, we're going to go ahead and put this through. Gemini. I have a lot of stuff up there. So with the Gemini, we've got a, like a B plate on the cuddle bug. We've got a plastic shim, a metal shim to hold it in place. Our die cut side up, our paper, and another like B plate. And so now you'll hear it go through. Here we go. Go ahead and take this right off of here. I gotta sit down. I did not need that much tape. <laughs> That's okay, as we peel this out of here, we'll just get rid of that because we won't need it all. Oh, and you wanted it black. You wanted it black on there. I did it the opposite way. Were you hollering at me? Jen, you ding dong. That's not what I wanted. 
about if we do it the opposite way? I'll put this on top of a black piece of paper instead. I should have some black paper here. There's one. Oh, I knew I did. So we could experiment, actually. We could say, okay, does this look good on here? Or maybe we want a purple one behind there. I think I got a piece of purple to show off those purple highlights. Now I could have put another shim in there. Do you see how I've got um, a little bit of that embossing in there? It should emboss too. I probably could have put another, like maybe a piece of foam on there. That would have looked really pretty. And I used that purple tape, so this should all just come off eventually. I like it on the purple. I think the black was a little bit harsh, but look at the how the purple brings out that. That's cool. That's really cool. So to put that down, what I would do is I would just flip it over, put it in my garbage can, and spray it with the spray adhesive, and then put it down. Actually, I think I'll do that right now. That would be the easiest way to do it. And I think most of you guys know the stuff that I like to use, the spray stuff, if I can find it. It ran away. It literally ran away. I don't have it near me. Oh, there it is. It jumped down from the shelf. This one, this Beacon Value Adhesive Spray, get from the Dollar Tree. I dropped it glue side down. That's bad luck. That's really bad luck. And then layer it with black. We could do that. We got a lot of glue on that side, so we'll just pick the side. I could actually make this a little bit smaller. We could cut it. Ooh, I really like that one. What if we did a, it with a white and then a black? How would that look to make it stand out more? That would be pretty. I feel like when you put it onto the black, it just kind of sucks everything down and you don't see it. But that's pretty. I should have soaked this in a little bit of... um something because oh this is the one that I lost the actual cover to this so I have a different cover on it that's why it dried out a little bit I mean you obviously it, it still worked but dang yeah let's go ahead and layer this on here let's see how this goes So as we're coming to the end of the hour, are there other things that you want to see me try in case there's maybe something that you don't have at home 
or maybe something you want to see so that you could decide which ones you want to get for your use at home. That's really pretty. I believe this is going to be a little bit bigger than the standard card, but that's okay. Penny, you've been looking for that stencil? I can't remember where I got it. That's really cute. Let's look at a couple of the things that we've done and then you guys can maybe that'll give you a little bit of like, oh yeah, that's what I wanted to see. So we've got that pretty one. We did a couple of these where we smoosh them together after we sprayed them. And then we did a little mystical one. I really like the way that one turned out. This one's got those rub rubbing the rub-ons, the metallic rub-ons, and those, that turned out really pretty. And then we did that little card front. There's another thing you can do. Um, oh, this one turned out really pretty too. Check this out. This was um, the silver or the slate. Let's see. The slate shimmer with a uh, purple. What? I think these are two shimmers with the laid back lilac. I think that's what that was. Look how pretty. And obviously you can do the foil papers too. I just didn't pull them out. I mean, it's like the, the ideas that come to me and I'm like, oh my God, Jen, you got an hour. You, you only have an hour. <laughs> so here's a couple of that one. I did spray this one. This one is white. So even if you're only doing white for something fancy, they turn out gorgeous. Here's another thing that you can do that I showed off in the um, previews. And all this is, is just, it was sprayed with the green, I think the citrus, the citrus spray oxide, and then the chocolate shimmer by Dilutions. And then I just, um, while it was wet, actually, I think I let that dry. What does it say? Yeah. I let that dry and then I crumpled it all up. I sprayed it with a little bit of water to wet, wet the fiber so it'd get loose again. And then I crumpled it up and let it dry. And when you let it dry, then it, it keeps this bumpy texture but let's say you're like you don't want this bumpy texture you just want the look of that you can take this and put your little mini iron on it and it'll become flat and you'll still see the lines it looks really cool I've done that before in another video um, we did that other card too where did I set that guy we did the flower card And I lost him. Did I move my camera again? No, it's okay. Oh, there it is. It's because I made that pass through the Gemini and then I covered it up. So there's the other one that we did, the card base. And then you can put your sentiment, like I would like put a black sentiment right here. And I will probably emboss it. I still have a whole bunch to play with yet. I still have all of these. Look at that blue one. That one is so pretty. There's the patina. Thanks, Pat. This was so much fun. So if you have more ideas or you want to see more things like this, let me know. Leave it in the comments. Give me a thumbs up on your way out if you enjoy this one. Here's one that I cut down. This one had um, a white spray, a white linen, I think, in with the chocolate. So it's kind of like really melted chocolate. Maybe chocolate and white chocolate melted together. And there's one I just cut. So I've got a lot of these to play with yet. You love them all. Does anyone have an absolute favorite? I think this one's my fave. I like Whimsy. I'd like to get a, um, I would really like to get like a little fairy or something to put on there. I think that would be really pretty. 
super cute. Oh, that's nice, Penny. She'll let you guys know in the resale shop if she can find that metal tree die. So, or stencil, not die, sorry. The metal tree stencil. I think my, actually my mother-in-law might have given that to me. I saw it at her house and I was like, oh my gosh, where'd you get that? <laughs> that said you can also run it through your cuddle bug with just the plates to flatten it. I think that that would also work, but the little iron makes it super flat. If you want it to be super duper flat. All right, guys. Well, I don't see any other questions or suggestions, so I'm going to wrap up for tonight. This was super cool. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you've got um, questions, let me know. Drop them down in the um, chat box or come back after it's archived. Otherwise, you can private message me on the Facebook groups. Um, new stuff is going into the store and the resale this whole time up until our next sale, which will be Saturday the 19th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. And if you are a patron, if you uh, support the community through patron, you're going to get into the private group. You can get 12 digis, um, year-round digis, one every month for free. And you'll get 10% off of any items that you purchase through the online store at qualitycrafts.com. So if you have any questions, let us know. Until then, next week, we will see you on Wednesday for 1 in 10, and then Friday for another fun video just like this. And I can't wait to see you guys next video.